Okay. What we've seen previously, so we've seen that this particular um, part shows us the calculations and not the parameters that we can easily um, improve. So here, if you see the, the arrow there, it's showing you the flexibility. Okay, it's showing the flexibility. So um, going on by that. All right, so going by that, we are going to the next slide now. Here is a model, okay? This model um, is showing you the horizontal vector. It works very well. You will see that it has a support, and it also has um, different um, components and different parts and features, okay? So this is just a clear illustration. Of the, that's how the really support. So remember that the support are always positioned on the axis of the pipe. So you put the, you place the support on the axis. Axis of modeling of the vertical column. So previously we saw the horizontal um, vessel, pressure vessel. Now we are looking at the modeling of the vertical column. So you see your vertical column here. And you've also seen this parameter. So at the right hand side, you see an illustration of the 2D model of this vertical. So you see, in fact, once you model um, it, once you model it, you can easily get the 2D version of it without much stress. Okay. So here is also the same illustration as above. But here showing you a specific um, mode. Show you what's happening at that particular node at that particular point in time. Okay, so here we have modeling of form from compressors and turbines. So in modeling of forms, compressors and turbines, you need to pay more attention to the displacement of the connection point from rotating equipment temperature expansion. You also need to look at the check that's full load and also the extended load check using the API and also the ghost and ISO code. Remember, these are codes that this software uh, um, is incorporates into that these codes are incorporated into this software such that the, the, the model that we can obtain from this software for our pipes, our compressors, and our turbines, they, they all obey the industrial standards and codes. Okay? So here we also have the rotation equipment for allowable load standards. So these are also the, the configuration. Yeah, we have the ISO 1379 API 610, the good code for configuration that's for centrifugal form for petrochemical. So we also have the ISO 9905, the good um, 54806 for, for centrifugal form plus one. Yep. We also have the ISO 5199 and 54805 for, um, for the centrifugal form class 2. And also we have the ISO 1043 or the 817 centrifugal compressors. And we also have the ISO 10437 on the mass and that's 85. So these codes we see here are codes that industrial codes and standards that this particular software has incorporated into it, so that these equipment you are forming, okay, they are standards, so they can be used at any given uh, place or country who uses these codes as standards. So we have more of them, more of all these. So we have here, this is an illustration of what we looked at before. So here is also a cross section. This cross section shows you all this um, equipment that we are looking at that undergoes all these um, configurations. So this is an illustration of the equipment. Okay. So model using start pro. So if you want this model, it looks as if it's complex, but once you get to our capture section, you will see that this model is so simple to this 
if I'm fighting, um, so you can easily model this. So here we also have the, the property that can be altered. So look at your right top, you will see this property of both the first model model and the second model. At the down too, if those watch this screen very well, you will see various numbers um, on the model, various numbers, various um of course, information, all those things are here. So you see, when we start modeling this, um, this uh, our vessel and our pipe, we we'll know how to draw this. But remember, all those properties will be looking at from our first view here. Okay, your anchors are here and all that. So let's go to the next slide. So here, we also have all those um, nozzle loading. So these are nozzle loading. The right hand side, you will see our nozzles. And also those um consider the X, Y, and Z axis of all your nozzles. We also have the cross section there. And at the left hand each that's the, the top of the nozzle for X, Y, Z, and R. The R represents the the reaction that the reaction that takes place when these nozzles are Look at the top, you see your nominal set of plants. So the nominal um the nominal sizes of your flanges are recorded there. So when this nominal um, flanges, so this is the result you obtain. So this is just a clear illustration of how the nozzles are being loaded in that form. Okay? So here, we, we also have um, a country previous um, session for this for horizontal form. And all these formulas are also there um, inbuilt or embedded in the software. Okay? So here, we also show that if you watch very well, you see the red line, those um, parts um, circle the thread. So in start of, in use of start of, whenever you in start of modeling, if there's any error, start of will pop up those errors in red. So when it pops up those errors, you will be able to identify that you made errors there. And we can also um, correct this. Okay, so here we have modeling of inline form, the filter and the two, three, four valve wheels. So here you have all. So this is um, how you, your inline form look like. Your filter looks like and the two, three, four valve wheel valve. Okay, same um, configuration here. So what's very well. You will see various properties and loading of the nozzle. Okay, this table also shows you your nozzle loading. Okay. Okay. All right. Also, what we explained just now. So here is we are looking at the advanced check technique. Using the API 610 or the ISO 13709 or good plan. So now watch here, you see the vertical inline form, you see the, the formula given here. These formulas are all embedded in the software. So we'll go on. So here we are looking at the corner. So this is a very clear illustration of your VAT. Okay, so look at the right hand side, you see how it's been illustrated. Or how you observe it and factor. Okay, you see here. Yeah, it's the box side of chain. So here we have the three-way valve with drive. So this is uh, um an electrical of your three-way valve with drive. Then at the right hand side you also see the three-way um, drive with valve, but as more there. In, in here we have the modeling of flat, the flanges, leakage check. Now, when you finish modeling, you need to check for leakage. And we also need to look at how we can model flanges. So, check for, for leakage. You need to consider adding flanges to valve. You need to also consider checking the leakage of the flange, connect that the flange connection using different meta the flange connection sense calculation. So these three properties you see here are considered each time we, we are trying to model our flange and our leakage test. 
for the good thing about um, it equips you such that once you include the value needed, okay, this check will be done automatically. And then if any error exists, you'll be informed. And then when you're informed, you can. So here we have this language check, which also has all these formulas that are embedded in the software. Okay. The applications are done already. They're already done for you. Okay. So here yeah, we look at the task model that how to model with your you have your, your tank settlement modeling, you have your tank thermal expansion modeling, you have your tank bulging effect modeling, having rotation and being on the fluid height. So the fluid height to determine how the rotation that the, the rotation will occur. It also determines the moment of the nozzle. Okay, look at um, the tank nozzle flexibility. And also, you check for reliable tank nozzle loads. You also, it also the start proposal to check for the stresses at the tank and also um, the, the concentrate of the tank settlement. So, it will help you also for the selection of your spring hanger that could help your thought that it will not tilt up where you want the, the, the model to be placed. Okay? So this is also a clear um, illustration that is to the graphical illustration to show you those calculations we looked at previously. Okay, now um, same with this place. So if you watch this place, you know so that this is also a sample of the nozzle FM. So as we said before now, the nozzle FM is one of the packages in fact. Okay. So it's I mean, the calculation needed for nozzles. Because for you to include a nozzle, for that for you to make a, a, a nozzle into a, a pipe or a model, yeah. so these calculations are done by um, your by part as a software so that you don't each user won't stress his or herself much in um, each in the model and in, um, embedding them or putting them, connecting them. To other models, okay. So here we have the tank. Um, the tank diameter is very, very large. There are some principles that you that you must um, follow. Now, if you have a very large um, pipe diameter, then your space. Look up if you look at this place very well. Just like it's not the strength um, support, the, the the adjustable strength support. So if you watch very well, those adjustable strings are used in keeping this uh, model in place. Okay, so we also go to this slide. Now here we are looking at a fire meter modeling. Now for your fire meter modeling, we are basically considering the allowable load that are placed according to the AC ISO and also the ISO and those codes here. And also the method we are going to use now we are looking at using an anchor at the point where the pipe goes inside. When you are modeling a, a fire heater, a fire heater, you are going to consider the the using an anchor. So you can decide to use an anchor that was supposed to get into the heater. Okay. So from the right hand side here, we see this um, allowable force is a moment um, for tubes. And down, we also see the allowable force um, um, results or this table we can find here is a table that shows you the results you obtain when you utilize um, this particular crop in modeling your fire data. Okay? So remember, the parameters we put in are what to determine the results. Okay? This is just the outlet system. Okay, so here we have a, a, a form of um, complex model. Here, if you watch your model here, it looks so complex. But remember that we're modeling the whole or part of the um, the funnel coil that is inside the heater. 
So when you consider uh, modeling the whole or part of the finance for the data, you are going to as a vendor or as someone that wants to um, that is using this platform in modeling uh, um, the equipment, you need to provide allowable displacement goes into the heater. Okay? So if you watch very well, you see the plus delta X, neg um, that's negative delta X and all that. So this place is telling you about that while um, considering the path or the point in which the pipe goes into the heater that you're trying to model. Okay? And we also look at um, using it using in its gap uh, value between the pipe and the heater shell. So if you look at it down here, you see um, the allowable moment for, for steel. So this allowable moment for steel is at there, manifold at there. So this moment, this value is given to you at the allowable moment, okay? So here we have the air, cool, the air cooler modeling. Now, to consider the nozzle that are modeled as an anchor, that the nozzles are modeled as anchors with move an anchor. Anchors are one of the features you can find inside. It's a clear, um, if it's a clear view of this your air cooler that is being modeled using that stuff. Okay. So if you watch very well, the yellow part, that's the part, it's an illustration of the part that is at the left hand side that is more dealt with that stuff. So watch them very well, you see the relationship between them. You see that it's just an equivalent that, that the air cooler at the left hand side that is more dealt with that stuff is the same that you are seeing at the right hand side during um, a factory operation. Okay? So, um, think the header, that the header model using this element um, restrained from vertical displacement and rotation. Okay, so here we all this. You watch this, we are, going, we, are using, we are using the floating header. Okay, for the floating header, it's modeled using what? The rigid element. And the restrained element. So here is just an option two. So if you don't want to use option one, which is the previous one we just looked at, you can also use this option in um, checking for your air cooler. So here at the down here, there are so many supports at the down also to help or assist your pipe to avoid deformation. Okay. So here we have the nozzle load API six six one. So um, StarCraft helps you to check this nozzle load. So at this part, you see this value here, the, the maximum allowable nozzle load. Okay, and at the right hand um, moment and bending and forty that are allowed on your nozzle. Okay. So, so if you watch here, we have that load on one more multi bundle bill shall not exceed three times that which is allowable for single header. So this um this part you must know about this is that when you when you are trying to model this particular um equipment now if the total um nozzle load if it is higher than three times the allowable the, three times the allowable load for the single header that stuff will give you an error. That error code that I was giving to you will make you understand the maximum allowable load. Okay? So once you know that well, um, that stuff gives you the error that you've exceeded the maximum allowable load, all you now do is to reduce and then know that that particular fixture cannot undergo such um, force. So that's reduce your of that stuff. It, it, it guides you at all times. It doesn't allow you to model a field without fulfilling its function. Okay? So here we look at the analysis that how to analyze results and how to interpret your results. Okay? So here the piping stress, that's the, the piping stress results 
your fighting stress when you analyze it. Remember, after modeling your your fight or your vessel, you need to analyze low if it can um, withstand all the external forces. Okay. So when you check the fighting stress, you are going to look at both the the stress, the cyclic stress, and also the defect stress. So these stresses are under your fighting stress. So once you are checking your analysis for your fighting stress, the insulation stress is considered the cyclic, which talks about your um, the 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 eyes that's cold. So you, based on mostly within Nigeria, our pipes don't undergo cyclic stress because we don't have any form of escape around um, here in, the part, in this part of the country. Okay, but then remember that when you are considering the piping stress, you are going with the insulation stress, the seismic um, stress, and the defect stress. So for your piping stress, we are told that you should also ensure that the piping system can reduce the load time. Remember, as we said before now, if you put in a, a load that the piping system cannot carry within a service lifetime, then you must have an error. In fact, that, that particular part of the piping system will fail within a short period of time. And once it fails, the equipment cannot be used anymore until such a um, such part of the equipment. While we need to consider the piping stress each time we are modeling. We also need to look at um, the displacement. For your displacement, for your displacement, we are going to be looking from the output of the 3D view. So to know your displacement, you need to click on output 3D view. So during the practical section, you will see how this is being done. So we are, we are looking at the pipe instability. So your pipe or your model must be stable. Okay? So the ability of that your model to resist bulk is what we must in the 3D output of the result. So um, if there will be any form of um, displacement or deformation, it will be clear, you will see it clearly, that your pipe will be um, placed under such um, design, um, design loads. Okay? So it will be clear, it will be visible to you being the, the um, model designer, that's the graphic designer, the piping designer. So when you design your pipe, you will see the output in the 3D. Uh, and that also, if there will be information when that uh, model is being used. Okay? So we also um, look at um, the error warning here. As I see, pop up, when you put in wrong parameters or when the load you put in exceeds the allowable load, okay? How to check against the internal pressure of the load. Now, for one thickness, look at the calculation, the formulas we have here. So these formulas, we have the actual defect at one place, and also that's for load uh, pressure. As defect at one place for load pressure, and look at the calculation there. This calculation um, that we can find here, uh, as we said before now, we talk here, okay? So, but you just need to understand that there are calculations that are done to determine the work, the work thickness. That's when you are trying to check for the work thickness. The beauty of this is that once you put in your parameters, okay, these calculations will be done for you automatically and results will be visible. Okay, so once you are in line with this course, that truck will automatically give you an error um, code or an error message. Okay, which you can now. So, here we are looking at um, the calculations too that are required. Okay, we are looking at the calculations that are required. So, just like we said, they are all embedded into, your, into the software. Okay, so we'll be rounding up. Um, with the slide for today. Now, 
Now, here also, this is something that I also uh, rebellion with the factor. So, we need to stop here for today. So, we'll continue next time. Um, 